I had a shop update last weekend and I did something slightly different with it and um, I thought it might be interest to some of you at least. Um, I'm going to be throwing a bunch of medium uh, mugs that will be drippy slippy tomorrow but for now they're just essentially straight sided mugs. Um, yeah so I have always done a slightly unusual way of selling anyway which I could get away with because I have a much smaller kiln than most people. So I've always made things to order rather than doing the kind of drop updates that most artists seem to do. Um, and I found this works better. So rather than making stock, I let people order from a, a much wider range of stock and then I make it, um, make it after I've taken the order. And I can do that because I have a small kiln and a small studio and I can kind of work through things as I get them. Um, rather than if you've got a massive like if you had a wood kiln, there's no way you could do that because, well, you could once you were a big enough account, but you couldn't as a small account because if the orders are coming in dribs and drabs, you might have to wait months to fill a kiln. Whereas when you've only got a little one, you can do them quite quickly. Um, about this time last year, I had an issue with my clay, with the light clay, um, and ended up losing a bunch of pieces that I'd made and so then I was behind and it got to the point where orders were coming in I was having to catch up basically a whole month's worth of work while dealing with new orders uh, and I turned to my shop to you know, put everything out of stock for a bit while I caught up and since then I basically haven't been able to turn it back on well, I have no intention to, to be honest, I prefer this way of saying. But um, I can't turn it back on because enough demand has built up that um, when they're available to order, people want to order more than I can make in a month. So, uh, what I do is I do a timed update like people would do with a kind of more drop style shop update. Um, but rather than saying here are all the pieces that I've made that are ready to order I say you can place as many orders as you want for whatever pieces you want uh, but once I've reached a set amount for the month which I'm kind of on sat I'm literally sat there um, toggling the shop off uh, when I want to stop taking orders so I have to it's something I have to pay attention to there's not an automatic way that I've found of doing it, but essentially I just toggle the shop off um, so that nothing's available. So you can order anything until I reach the threshold and then you can order nothing. So that's the way that I've been doing it. Um, the problem is with anything like this, once you start down that route, so you've got, I mean, I'm not gonna call it artificial scarcity because it's not exactly artificial but it is in a way it's a bit like that when you get um, limits of sales of something digital where realistically there's no limit that's called artificial scarcity and the idea being that people react uh, more impulsively to scarcity if you know that you only have a short window to order something or that there's a finite amount of them you're more likely to order immediately uh, and that's why a lot of shops will say there are only two of these left and four people have it in their basket because they know that by saying that it might not make you buy it but it will push you towards it so it's worth doing from a shop's point of view um, but basically because of that I'm selling out faster and faster each time and in a way, you know, it's kind of great for me. Not really, but it looks good on paper to say I had a shop update and it sold out in five minutes. And you, some of the guys that are really big accounts, like um, Florian Gadsby, I think he'll generally sell about three, four hundred pieces in each update in a couple of minutes. Um, where I'm selling out in a similar sort of time, but nowhere near as many pieces. 
but that basically is as a result of you you once that becomes a thing once you know you have to be there within two minutes to get a piece then everyone starts trying to get there within one minute and it escalates especially when you make really nice pieces like he does um, so it's no surprise that people want them and then add the scarcity to that and you get a mad rush for orders um, the problem is that it's not a particularly nice buying experience and that's assuming you even manage to get a piece it's even more frustrating when you don't get a piece um, and I know from a few people that have got in touch with me after my shop updates that it's really trivial little things like PayPal taking an extra 30 seconds to text you the code to verify you are who you are um, that can be the difference between getting an order in and not getting an order in especially seeing as Squarespace doesn't allow me to um, let people who have something in their basket check out and at the same time stop new people putting things in their baskets it's either anyone can buy it or no one can so literally until you have that order confirmation you can be right at the final stage if I then turn the shop off you lose it so it's incredibly frustrating for some people and even for the people that place orders it's still pretty stressful to to know that you have to be online at a within 60 seconds of the shop update going live and then you have to rush through all the things you want you can't double check you can't add a note at checkout so I'm I get emails sent afterwards saying, oh, I meant to say this, but uh, I didn't add that note so that I could get things checked out. But then obviously it's not attached to the order anymore. So it makes um, my job a little trickier as well. And so on and so forth. It's just not great from a, a practical point of view. Um, but there aren't many other ways. So if you've got a limit to how many pieces you have or how many pieces you can make in my case, and you don't want to exceed that you will always get this sort of race the, the, the quicker it sells out the quicker people will get there the quicker they'll place orders the quicker it sells out so positive reinforcement um, and I haven't been able to come up with a practical way to solve it until and this doesn't quite solve it, but this is an, another way of selling. So um, I'll put screenshots in so you can see uh, exactly what I'm talking about from a kind of how it actually works point of view. But essentially what I did was I created a form on my website that was available for two days before the shop update went live and one day afterwards. And that form just got someone to put their name their email address, how many pieces they'd like to order, and roughly what the value of that order would be. And then with Squarespace, you can <coughs> get it to um, take the form data and put it into a spreadsheet in Google Docs for you. It's incredibly easy, it's just, you know, it's part of, built into the form. So you, you get it, when you set up a form in Squarespace, you tell it, what you want it to do with the contents of the form. Now normally I have them email to me and I did as a backup for this one just in case anything went wrong with the spreadsheet so I at least have a copy of them but um, you can just tell it rather than emailing you or anything like that to so shove all that information into a spreadsheet so each person gets their own row um, which just has each field as a column so you've got a column of names, you've got a column of email addresses, you've got a column of order quantities and order values, um, and then each row is a person. And what that means is that with that information, um, you can pick people at random. So there's now no stress, it's pure luck as to who gets an order rather than who gets there first. So people know that they've got a couple of days to get their there's no stress to the process of filling in the form um, and then just based on luck you either get a slot or you don't 
uh, does mean afterwards that I then have to email them, find out what they want, set up a, a custom listing for it, email them the custom listing, and then they buy it through the shop, which is a bit more work on my part, but I don't mind it. Um, but from a practical point of view, this form going into a spreadsheet works really well. And then what I did to um, randomly pick is you just use, I use random between and got generated a number for every person between one and 999 and then sorted the entire sheet by those numbers. So now you've got a list of people randomly sorted um, and then you can just select down a column until you've reached the quantity or value that you want to take. So in my case, <coughs> everything's priced fairly well on how much kiln capacity it takes up. I mean, there's a slight, um, you know, kind of mugs are disproportionately more expensive for their capacity and things like that. But it does kind of mean that a thousand pounds of work for me is roughly speaking the same amount of work whether it's big bowls or um, tiny bowls or little tumblers or big mugs that sort of thing so I can say I want to take two thousand pounds worth from this and I know that that's going to be you know a week two weeks roughly um, work to fill so I can um, just select down the list until I've got the value that I want um, and then I email those people and email everyone else to tell them they haven't got it. So this is a little bit more work but if you're a maker who has um, more people wanting to order than you can supply and that is becoming a sticking point or a point of frustration for people. I'm not using this exclusively. I have the time shop update, um, which is the bulk of the orders, meaning there is a way that people can, through um, kind of, not gonna say effort, but it is partly effort. If you can be bothered to sit there refreshing the page, you've got a much better chance of getting an order in than if you go through the lottery. But for everyone that can't be there at that point or misses out because they didn't refresh it quite fast enough, there's a, it's a way of relieving some of that frustration. And at least when people don't get an order like that, it's not quite as frustrating as turning up 20 seconds too late to, to check out in time. So, I would recommend giving it a go. Um, I hope between my instruction, well, say instructions, my description, and I'll overlay screenshots of what it looked like so you can kind of see. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know, I'm afraid, how that would work in any other platform. I used Wix before Squarespace, but I never tried anything like this. I think Shopify is much more limited and if you're on something like Etsy, I think you'd struggle with that as well. So it might be worth looking into, um, I suppose you could do it with, um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm doing a, a data collection thing going into Google Sheets. Well, you can do that through um, Google Forms, I think. So if you're a maker that can't integrate it into your own website, and it could be that you sell on Etsy or something like that. You could probably do it that way. Um, I don't know, you'll have to figure out exactly how that incorporates into how you do things. But from my first test of it, I'm really pleased with how it worked. Um, I asked for feedback. Obviously the people who got their orders through the, the lottery part of it were very happy about that. But even the people who didn't get their orders would were happy that they got the chance to try it that way because it is fundamentally less frustrating than not getting your order through a timed update um, so they'd prefer that way and then yeah less stress so I, at the moment it's looking pretty good from my point of view um, I'm going to try it again on future updates maybe not next month just because 
because it's so close to Christmas, what I want to do is, I don't know if you can really see on the shelves behind me, that I'm piling up all the, I tend to throw overs. So if I've got um, eight of, or just for eight of one kind of a mug, so say like a medium autumn drippy slip mug, I'll throw 10. And then if I need the spares, I've got them. Um, and if I don't need them, they go on the pile. And then I'm going to do a lucky dip update. So I'm going to say, there are 40 mugs ready to send right now. Buy one, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, what I did last year was they were slightly discounted. Um, not a huge amount, but like maybe five pounds off, something like that. And then five pounds for every mug will go to, um, I think I did fair share, or possibly Trussell Trust last year. The one of the, the people that make sure everyone's fed over Christmas, well, fed generally, but particularly over Christmas. Um, they're kind of, they're a food bank charity. Um, there are a few like that, or possibly crisis to make sure anyone homeless is looked after over Christmas. Just because it's a, a kind of a seasonal update and, and I feel particularly sorry for anyone having a terrible Christmas when I know that the mugs are going to people who are going to be enjoying them at Christmas. So it's nice to, to kind of split that a bit. So one of those charities, um, and I'll do a lucky dip update, but what that means is obviously I won't be selling that way next month. Um, but one other thing I did this month and will be attempting again next month, but um, even better, and this is where if you're a potter you might be interested, is I obviously then had a list of email addresses for people who wanted to buy mugs or pots from me and couldn't. Now, I would imagine a lot of those, you know, they want to buy a specific thing from me. Um, and so it's not a necessarily just a general um, looking to purchase pottery. But some people are pottery collectors and they want to find pot people making nice handmade pottery. And I happen to be a person doing that, but obviously I'm not the only person. And so I've got a list of people who want to buy stuff. Um, so what I did was I put out on Instagram just a little thing saying, does anyone want to be, you know, if I can do this, does anyone want to be included on a list of people who have work ready to sell online right now? Um, and I got, I don't know, 30, 40 names, I think, um, from people on Instagram. And it's just so, it's a, a list of potters who have work ready to send, um, who are interested in being included so that they would get a bit more visibility to people who potentially wanted to buy stuff like that. And it worked quite well the way I did it, but I think I could, using the Google Forms technique, uh, do a much better import. So I have to do less work, and the, um, the page at the end contains more information because the way I did it was quite limited. Um, all of that to say, that what I'm hoping to do is for December, I will have a page on my website where anyone who's a potter who has work ready to sell online can, um, by filling in a form correctly, um, I'll have to kind of be a bit on that, have to work out the best way to do the form and then make sure people do that part correctly. But if you can fill in the form correctly, it will automatically generate um, a little listing style, um, essentially bio and link to your Instagram and or website. Um, and I've worked it out so that I should be able to get it to automatically capture useful information like where you're based, where you're shipped to, your price range and let you automatically upload well, not upload because of the way it's doing it, but include images. Um, hopefully this will all make sense once you see what I actually mean. But um, I should be able to get 
the kind of information that you need to know in order for this to actually work because if you're asking people who are unaware of you as a seller to kind of click through and find out more about you they'll want to know are you in the same country as them or do you ship to their country um, how much do you charge and then the picture is going to be the real key the picture is what for the last one I went through and manually screenshotted everyone's Instagram pages um, because I knew that if it was just a list of names uh, next to Instagram links no one's going to click through or they might click through one or two but they're not clicking through all of them whereas if it's a long list of pictures and people can just flick through pictures and see them then they might well do that so if I'm going to do it I want to do it in a way that does actually translate to something of value to the people who bother to upload it. But um, yeah, so that I'd have a list of people um, and hopefully it would be a good place for people looking for gifts to go to find uh, new potters, possibly something that they hadn't considered otherwise or someone that they weren't aware of um, and would help share, essentially I've I've got an audience for my work, but I'm not capable of making fast enough. One of those things where I can't make enough pieces um, and I would like to have the ability to put that towards more good. Um, I don't want it to be, uh, yeah, I don't, it's a tricky one. I don't mind putting in a bit of work, but I want it to be something that's, if I can set it up right, I want it to be something that I can do almost passively. Um, but I also feel like if it's going on my website, I have to maybe not curate it, but at least make sure that people aren't abusing it. And I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do that. So it's one of those things where at the moment it's a nice thought. Um, I will test it to see if there's any chance of it actually working as a as a thing and I'm not certain that it will but um, I would like to be able to do that and I think I have an idea in my head as to how I would do it um, so if you're a maker watch this space if you're interested in purchasing pottery from me um, there will be another shop update as I say with hopefully if I do it right I'll have some of the Christmas slip mugs um, specifically listed as such so if you want one of those there will be some and they'll be ready to send because the start of January is already oh, sorry, January, start of December is already cutting it a bit fine for Christmas delivery internationally unless you use kind of a proper priority service. Royal Mail's um, standard shipping would normally get there within around a week or two but um, especially to the US last year it was more like four or five weeks over Christmas so once you're in December that's probably not going to cut it unless you're very lucky. Um, so everyone's going to have to use the priority if they want to get it and even then I, I don't like leaving it, cutting it that fine. So I want to get it all done as early as possible in December and that might mean that I don't have as many pieces ready as I would like. And I could always do another um, thing later on in the month for people in the UK or people who are going to pay for priority shipping but we'll see how that works out but anyway there'll be another update of some sort in December for Christmas things um, and then hopefully a list of other people you could buy from if you wanted to support someone so that was quite long and rambly I can't imagine too many of you made it all the way to the end but um, yeah hopefully that's useful I might do a blog post because I think that's probably a better way of explaining the lottery setup. As I say, I'll go back and um, try and include any information that would be useful as stills. 
um, and let me know in the comments if you made it this far and have any questions and I will do my best to answer them. Um, I enjoy making spreadsheets but I'm not, it's not what I do, it's just um, I like trying to get things to work which yeah so I'm, I probably didn't do it the best possible way but the nice thing with Squarespace and Google Sheets well, I mean, the nice thing about Squarespace is that it lets you import and export things as spreadsheets. And actually, it's not the best system in the world, but it does allow, if you're prepared to um, put a bit of time setting up a spreadsheet, to kind of automate things relatively well with um, inputs and outputs. So. That is certainly one thing it's got going for it, even if it has other flaws. But yeah, anyway, let me know if you've got any questions. Um, I'll stop the video once I've finished throwing this piece, but I can't be bothered to wipe my hands just yet. Um, if anyone was wondering, I still think this green laser, the one that I recommended a few weeks ago, it's great. I really like it. It's got a much better switch than other ones that I've tested. I've got it hardwired so I haven't changed the batteries, it just it's on or it's off. Uh, but it's plugged into a USB so it um, does that part itself. And then everything else, the fact that the laser stops so it's not in my face, it's great. Uh, so I would really recommend one of those specifically if you're going to get a laser. I generally say, have, well up until now I've generally said it doesn't matter, they're all just lasers. Any two axis self leveling laser would be fine. But now I specifically would go with that one if I was buying one. Um, I wasn't sure at the time but yeah so far um, and it's been a few weeks now. I am as impressed as it's possible to be with a self-leveling laser, I think. That's it, eight medium mugs. These are going to go undercover and then tomorrow I'll add slip and handles.